Hi, so in this video I'll be going over what we as economists tend to assume are the government's economic objectives. What is a government trying to achieve and as such how can we decide what is rational behaviour for a government and what is irrational? Is a government behaving as it should or is it not? So the first assumption we're going to make is that a government wants to maximise the welfare of society as a whole, or maximise social welfare. And this seems like a reasonable assumption, but we are assuming away what we see as corrupt governments, and these governments that are just sort of looking to meet their own personal interests. What we want in an economic model is to have some sort of benevolent government a government that actually cares about its people so its policies are trying to increase the welfare of the whole society and how a government might go about maximizing social welfare is that it could in theory come up with a function that adds together in some way every single individual in an economy's utility function and so ideally as we said with consumers economic objectives they want to maximize their utility and we have individuals that have some utility function but if we are a government we see that we have millions potentially billions of people that we're we're looking to cater towards if we're thinking about NATO and all these cross-governmental organizations then we can be thinking of maximizing utility for lots and lots of people so we have utility of person one plus utility of person two, and we have to add together utility of, let's, let's just for argument's sake say infinitely many utility functions, it's obviously very difficult to add together all of these. So this ideal scenario where we come up with a social welfare function is going to be very difficult to do. So in reality, what we see and what you have probably come across is that we have these simpler metrics or the simpler governmental targets in developed countries at least that we have a set of objectives that a government tends to try to meet and these are these are meant to proxy or they're meant to be a way of maximizing a the social welfare of society but we do it indirectly by saying that okay these metrics or these objectives if we meet these we're going to be giving ourselves the best chance of increasing social welfare so what are these objectives? Well, number one, we'll often see we have some sort of economic growth target, and we may see that this is around 2.5% in a developed economy, that we want to be growing at a sustainable economic growth rate. So we don't want low economic growth, because this means our economy is not expanding, we're not producing more goods and services, but we don't want to be growing too fast because this is going to be unsustainable and we can have negative effects such as having pollution and everything that comes with very high growth. Uh, this is potentially a topic for a future video for me to expand on, but this is one target. We have economic growth targets and this tends to be measured with GDP. We can also have an unemployment target. We want to keep our unemployment as low as possible and we may have a target, for instance, we want our unemployment below 5%, but this can vary between governments and there's often not a set unemployment target we just tend to want low and stable unemployment and the same can be said for inflation that we want this to be low and stable but we do tend to have a target of around two percent in a developed economy and this is going to be measured with our cpi index we could also use the rpi index but again getting into details on this is a topic for another video but our final metric that we may have is that we're looking to reduce the deficit so our balance of payments for a government they want to make sure that we're not spending more than we can afford and we're not leaving future generations with a lot of debt that has to be paid off through say higher taxes and lower spending so again sort of we're thinking about sustainability when we think of deficits but there are loads and loads of targets that a government may have. They may have very specific targets that they've set themselves, for instance, that they want to have low unemployment in a particular region. So in the UK, we tend to think about the northeast and the north as a whole being pot potentially high target areas that we want to 
increase our employment because the south tends to have much more of the economic growth than in the north uh, but so these are very specific unemployment targets for specific locations but we could also have other targets for instance that we want to increase our renewable energy output and there are loads of targets at the moment in reducing co2 emissions because of the whole climate change fiasco that's going on at the moment so there are loads and loads of government objectives that we can have but the purpose of this video was to maybe get across a more advanced point that what this is actually trying to do is trying to maximize our social welfare and in turn a what we might see as a composite index or a or the addition of lots and lots of individual people's utility functions and if we can increase everyone's individual utility we're going to be increasing everyone's overall utility it's just if we think about it in this way it gets a lot more complicated so we tend to simplify this complicated thing down into a very specific and easy to understand target of say 2.5 percent growth two percent inflation five percent unemployment and so on so that's the government's economic objectives. Please do leave a like on this video if it was at all useful. That would help me out a lot. Do check out the playlist for future videos on topics such as this one and subscribe for some economics in your subscription feed.